Hi, this is Salma Lalana and Manos Berlakis, and this is case 197 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of CTO-PCI in a patient with previous uh, transcatheter aortic valve replacement. The patient was referred for PCI of an LAD CTO. We decided to use uh, femoral and radial access because there was only one femoral access available. There was quite significant subclavian tortuosity but we were eventually able to advance the guide wire in the descending aorta and the tortuosity did straighten. We were able to engage the right coronary artery through radial access and then we obtained femoral access and trying to engage the left main. This was challenging, we could not get the guide close, but we were able to advance a guide wire that um, actually went into the coronary, was advanced from the aorta and went into the coronary and appears to be going into the course of the circumflex. We then use the guide extension, which are essential for engaging vessels in patients with previous tower. This was a sapien valve. And after doing that, we were able to visualize the vessel and we performed dual injection. This is the injection in the areocranial view. We can see the RCA pretty well, but unfortunately the trap liner is not well engaged in the left main, so visualization is not perfect. But then we advance the trap liner a little further in, and this is the dual injection. We do have a CTO of the middle LAD. It does have a well-defined proximal cap. There is heavy calcification within the LAD. The distal vessel is filling through collaterals, mainly from the right coronary artery. The CTO is about 30 millimeters. Distal vessel is diffusely diseased. So how to approach this? Given the favorable characteristics, we decided to start with undergrade wire escalation. We used a turnpike LP microcatheter along with the filter XTA that made some progress but could not be advanced further inside the LAD. We then changed into a Gaia next to wire and the wire actually easily crossed into the distal LAD, which we thought was excellent and that was close to the end of the case, but we were actually wrong because we were unable to advance a microcatheter which in turn was because of poor guy caster support. So the trap liner did not give us enough support to be able to advance the turnpike LP to the distal LAD. You can see the trap liner had actually fallen outside the vessel, so we had to use various maneuvers to try to re-engage the vessel and get more support. We did use the inch warming technique with a 2.0 millimeter balloon and then slowly we were able to advance the trap liner closer to the mid LAD which caused some pressure dampening. However, after doing that, after having the trap liner quite low, quite distally into the LAD, we were then able to advance a 1.0 by 15 millimeter subfire balloon across the area of the CTO, predilate, and then the turnpike LP could be advanced and we switched uh, the Gaia wire for a workhorse guide wire. The lesions seem to expand well with uh, balloon dilations and restored the TM3 undergrade flow. We did place uh, a 2 to 5 by 38 millimeters drag eluting stent that seemed to provide uh, good expansion. It was post dilated with a 2.5 millimeter balloon and we have good flow, although there is some diffuse distal disease. There was also a lesion in the obtuse marginal branch and we did a physiologic assessment. The DPR was 0.87. So we ended up standing it with a 3.0 millimeter drag eluting stand with a post PCI DPR of 1.0. The patient did have a relatively poor flow into the LAD. You can see the flow is not great despite the standing of the LAD. And uh, we thought that this could be due to diffuse disease in the distal vessel. So we performed additional dilations of the mid and distal LAD, distal to the previous stand, by using a 2.0 millimeter balloon and prolonged balloon inflations. After doing that, we did have much better flow, Timothy flow all the way to the distal LAD. So in summary, we had a patient with previous tower, which creates challenges for PCI. Specifically, the main challenge has to do with engagement of the coronary vessels. In this case, we were able to engage using a trap liner guide extension. However, we had poor support, which made it difficult to advance equipment. And to resolve this, we had to advance the trap liner all the way to the middle AD. This enabled crossing of the CTO with a balloon dilation and exchange of the guide wire. 
having a algorithmic approach is important. When we have a lesion that is crossed by a wire but nothing else will cross, the first step is to get a small balloon. In our case, that was not enough because the support was not strong enough. The next step is sometimes to rupture the balloon, sometimes it is to get a, a more support, and this was achieved here again by deep seating the guide extension. We did have a nice result at the area of the CTO, however, there was diffuse disease distally that seemed to impair undergrade flow, and this was resolved by doing prolonged balloon inflation with a 2.0 millimeter balloon. Having good outflow distally is important for maximizing the likelihood of the stent remaining patent and minimizing the risk of stent thrombosis. Thank you.